so Pastor Mark, Hi, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. what is a practical application for what church is? Good question, Gwendolyn. Uh, church, when you think of the word church, what comes to mind? Uh, first thing is a building. And I think of a, a, the right. steeple. You know, yeah, remember that old thing where you yeah. had the, the steeple, the church, yeah. to open the doors, here's the people, yeah. right? Uh, and that is the conception, because most of us say, I go to church, you know? And how did that understanding become so part of our fabric that, you know, it's easy. I could say, we're going to church Sunday, or I'm doing church Sunday. And we pick up this language and this meaning, but is it the meaning that Christ, see, that's what we have to get at. Is that meaning the meaning that Christ brought for the church? What is it? Yeah. You know, and as I look in scripture, the first thing we know is the head of our church is Jesus Christ. And what does that mean? That means that Christ is the, he rules the church. He, what he dictates teaches us to follow, which you know is different in other circles. Other circles have either, in the Church of England, the king. In Rome, the pope. You know, in the Baptist churches, you know, um, you know, you have who, the leader of the church there. In some of those churches, they have an ideology of church, but it may flow from them. We're Presbyterian. And as Presbyterian, um, it's what the text says we are, not what we wanted to say, what we wanted to mean. One of the verses I would go to, and these verses are part of the whole of Scripture, is in Ephesians chapter 1, where we get the definition of what is a church. And Paul says this. He says, for this reason, and this is in Ephesians 1 verse 15, I'm going to get a little context. For this reason, because I have heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love toward all the saints. So what Paul sees in this group of in Ephesus is two things. One, the love for the Lord Jesus Christ, their faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. So it's singular. Their faith is bound to Christ. And he also says, and your love toward all the saints. I think that's an, a word that people also think of these old iconic or I don't the know, the halo, icons with yep, yep, gold yep. and you know yep. a saint. And I'm not that. Yep. You know, they think, oh, that's something totally different. Oh, years ago, we used to, um, my grandmother had a room, and in this room, she had all these different saints that were in the room. And I used to go, I used to go into this room, right? And I couldn't sleep. I said, Graham, I can't sleep. Everybody's looking at me. <laughs> but they all had this halo on their head. Mm -hmm. And that, that's not what saint means. Mm -hmm. And in the text, when you look at their faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, really the definition is right there. There's a people in this world and throughout history for the last 2,000 years that are set apart for Christ alone. Because saint, hagios, set apart, sanctified from to, from the world, from its influence to Christ. And this particular people, Paul is praising when he says, and your love toward all the saints. See, those that are of Christ will love their own brothers and sisters, you know? Isn't and, there a verse that, that you will know that you will know if you yes it, 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 they will know you're my disciples yes by, by your love yeah, for exactly. each other yeah. and for each other and of course first john really talks about how could you call yourself a saint if you're not loving your brother james says how could you call yourself a believer when you're not helping your brother and of course brother defined in scripture is the saint the child of god you know, bought by the blood of Jesus Christ. So he defines it. Then he says in verse 16, I don't cease to give thanks for you. He's giving thanks. He's got good reasons. They care for their brothers and sisters in the faith and they love the Lord and they believe in Jesus Christ. He said that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you the spirit of wisdom 
So see, we can't attain this understanding. We have to read the scripture, depend on God to give us that spirit of wisdom and of the revelation in the knowledge of Jesus Christ. Having the eyes of your hearts enlightened that you may know what is the hope to which he has called you. What are the riches of his glorious inheritance in the saints? And then he says, and what is the immeasurable greatness of his power toward us who believe? So there is an, a, 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 a measure, an immeasurable love God has that he bestows to empower those that are in Christ. And this power is a submissive power also to obey Christ, but also endure the hardships that are going to occur in this world for defending the Lord and his word and himself. And he says, uh, and he talks about what type of immeasurable greatness of power. And what Paul does, he gives us an illustration of this power. He, and he says this, it's the same power that he worked in Christ when he raised him from the dead. Think of the power to raise a dead person with no blood in them, completely drained. So that power that raises a dead man could raise the dead and make us spiritually alive, you know, so that we could do the work of Christ empowered by his resurrection. Then he says this, that Jesus Christ is seated at the right hand of the Father, which is a, 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 a basic statement that talks about all authority, which he defines. He says, for Jesus is above all rule. Now, think of who rules in this world. You got presidents, dictators, kings. Uh, Nations, states. Yeah. Cities. Cities, mm -hmm. you know. So Christ is above all rule and authority and power and dominion. Now, sometimes we just read those words. We don't really think about them, but... He's above all that power, which means he has supreme power over any rule, any authority, any power, and any dominion on this planet. And no wonder why. Because we learn from scripture that Jesus upholds the entire universe by the power of his word. Think of the power that's in Jesus Christ. Think of that power, how it should motivate his saints to bear witness to him if they experience that power. Then it says this, and he put all things under his feet. So the father has put all things under Christ's feet. They all serve him. And he gave him. Now here's where we ask that question. What is the church? As he put all things under his feet and gave him his head over all things things to the church. So all these things that are there, rule, authority, power, dominion, they serve his church. And what is his church? He put all things under his feet and gave him as head over all things to the church, which is his body. You see that? So the church is his body. The fullness of him who fills all in all. So we want to get to the meaning of church. The first thing we want to say is, what is it? He defines it. The church is Christ's body. Next week, we're going to talk about what that body looks like and how he fills all in all. All right? Thank you. All right, Gwendolyn. That was great. Yeah.